without any further ado, um, I am really psyched to have the TIA folks here um, and Jaya, who has been working with TIA um, to talk about policy management and how they're leveraging that um, in their cloud security services. Aradna, thank you very much for your patience with our process and everybody in the audience. Please take it away, introduce yourselves, and I will go off camera for now. Thank you, Diane. Good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Radna Chetal. I am Senior Director, Exec for Cloud Security at TIAA. I'm also co-chair for CNCF Tag Security and Cloud Security Alliance Serverless Working Group. Um, Jaya. Um, thank you, Aradhana, for joining this session. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jaya Ramanathan. I'm the Chief Security and Governance Architect within Red Hat and also a Distinguished Engineer. My passion right now is policy-based governance and policy management and uh, such, uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, go ahead, Aradhana. Sure. Um, so let's step back and look at an enterprise today, especially a regulated financial enterprise. We have some traditional applications, right? Um, every regulated uh, entity or traditional enterprise has all those applications which have grown over time. And then they have cloud platforms, um, possibly multi-cloud. Every enterprise is multi-cloud literally now. And then uh, there are efforts going on where you have to refactor your traditional applications into containers so you can increase the velocity of deployments. Um, at the same time, um, there are challenges from a security and compliance perspective because you have all these different flavors of cloud platforms and container platforms and your traditional enterprise IT um, where the existing tools may not work in another um, cloud environment or may not work in a container platform. So the, the retooling of all the security controls, et cetera, is quite an amount of work and a challenge. And then having security seamlessly deployed with consistent policies across your IT estate is another big challenge for uh, enterprises today. And let's talk about regulatory compliance. And not only do we have uh, internal auditors, that is the second and third line of defense who are auditing our environments constantly and identifying any gaps or risks that we need to mitigate, but then we have external entities like um, OCC and you know FRBV and all those entities who want to look at our platforms and making sure that we are meeting all the regulatory compliance that we need to meet. So that was an overview of any, any traditional uh, financial organization or any regulated body. And we are no different at TIAA. Um, so we are also multi-cloud. We have leveraged OpenShift as our um, on-prem uh, private cloud, where we are using it as a playground for our developers to go ahead and refactor our um, enterprise applications into microservices so we can um, do digital transformation at the same time, achieve the velocity of deployment, right? Because financial applications, they change very quickly to meet the customer needs. So we need these applications to be microservices. Um, we, today, today it's a private cloud, but we are looking to a future uh, roadmap item where we will be hybrid OpenShift cloud platform as well. Um, container platform. So roughly we have about 42 clusters, about 750 odd applications, which are containerized right now, running in an OpenShift platform. Um, the main features of OpenShift that we are using are, we recently migrated to 4.7, which provides CoreOS as the operating system, and um, it can be deployed on bare metal. So we wanted to get the cost efficiencies and um, that you can get with deployment on bare metal. Um, at the same time, we wanted automation of configurations and policies that can be deployed on our container platform across the state and um, use Istio, you know, to build um, micro segmentation between applications as another layer of defense um, so we can reduce our attack surface and give developers the freedom to go do their development and explore changes within their own little micro segment. So that, that is pretty much um, a high level summary of what we use OpenShift for today and what our journey has been for OpenShift. Thank you, over to you, Jaya. 
Thank you, Aradhana. So I think um, as Aradhana highlighted, right, if you look at uh, any customer who is adopting cloud, they are typically moving toward a hybrid model and um, they also have to meet various enterprise standards, both internal as well as external regulatory compliance and so on. So then if you think about uh, how customers are achieving these goals, right, they have to worry about every layer of the stack. So they have to start at the uh, operating system level, then the container platform, then the middleware, then their applications. And typically, you know, they have to make sure that all these layers are configured properly to meet uh, their uh, enterprise standards and external regulatory compliance requirements and also successfully pass audits. So really, uh, if you think about a person who is managing this environment, right, the site reliability engineer or the ops person, they are really not experts in every aspect of uh, even security or resiliency or software engineering. And if you consider all those aspects that a customer needs to think about, they are not experts in everything, right? So the idea here is in order for them to really meet all these requirements and do it in a cost effective manner, really what needs to happen is um, we need to make this easy for them using automation and tools, right? And, and the way to make it easy is to codify those best practices as policies and manage policies just like you would manage source code. So that's the whole uh, premise behind policy-based governance. So from a Red Hat point of view, this is an initiative that we have been pushing for a while. And we have this capability available today in, as part of our Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes product offering. It is also available in our Red Hat OpenShift Plus bundle, which bundles ACM and also includes Advanced Cluster Security, which is a re recent acquisition of StackRox, which is now rebranded as ACS and Quay. So this policy-based governance capability is available through these product offerings. And um, uh, I also have links here on various blogs we have on this topic, as well as uh, we also have a CNCF Sandback pro project submit submitted for this as well, that is uh, slated to be reviewed in uh, November this year. So let me highlight a little bit about uh, what are the key capabilities of policy-based governance? What, what, what are the things you need? First, uh, if you think, think about any customer, including TIA, right? They are not just managing one uh, cluster. They're typically managing multi-cluster. So really your policy management approach has to be multi-cluster. And uh, if you look at uh, some of the community policy engines that are out there, like Gatekeeper, Kiverno, and so on, they are single cluster engines, which are very powerful in their own right. But really what we want to do is to enable a multi-cluster framework that allows you to ship policies to all those engines and uh, manage them in a scalable manner. Um, secondly, the policy framework has to be extensible because uh, I don't think we are going to have one policy language, policy engine agreed upon across the planet, right? So there are going to be multiple. So you need a policy framework that can integrate multiple policy engines. So that's very important. And that's what we have in ACM. And that allows you to integrate with both Red Hat and third party policy enforcement points. And these policy enf enforcement points could be examples of the OpenShift compliance operator, which comes as part of OpenShift, ACS, which is the advanced cluster security stack cross product. Um, it could be, you know, third party uh, vendors such as SysDig and, um, and also community technologies like Kuberno and Gatekeeper, et cetera. The third thing is, as I mentioned earlier, you need this policy-based governance applied across the entire stack, across all the controls. So that definitely requires a collaborative development of best practices and policies. So an upstream com active upstream community is very important. And we started one in the policy collection repo. And one of the things we're also looking at in the Kubernetes policy work group that both Aradhana and I are part of um, is to bring that to that work group and you know, foster more uh, industry collaboration uh, in, that, in that space. So here's the overall architecture. So you have the management hub. This is the central multi-cluster um, uh, management uh, hub that allows you to manage all the different managed clusters. So policies get deployed here and the policies can be either authored through UI or CLI or GitOps. GitOps is the preferred methodology because then you manage policies just like you manage source code. And then the policies get deployed to managed clusters based on a concept called placement. The placement could be based on various criteria. So you could say, for example, you could assign labels to your clusters for production and development and say, you know, apply all these policies to my dev clusters or all, all these policies to my prod clusters. Or you could also have uh, application of policies based on the type of cluster, whether, you know, whether it's an OpenShift cluster running on Amazon versus OpenShift cluster running on Google, et cetera. 
So on the managed clusters, you have various policy and enforcement points, and these um, provide one or more controls, and these technical controls then map to compliance standards as, as listed here. So that's the whole idea here. And then on the right-hand side, we are integrating with traditional enterprise um, IT tools, whether it is for incident management or enterprise governance and compliance tools or uh, SIMS for security operations center. So, because like Arthra pointed out, um, customers are looking at adopting um, container platforms as an extension to the existing IT infrastructure, right? So, their existing IT infrastructure, as well as IT processes and tools, are things that you see on the right-hand side. And we want to make sure that as they adopt cloud, they can easily integrate with those as well. So, I'm going to take a few minutes to just do a quick demo, uh, just to give you a flavor of uh, how these things work. So here is the console for the ACM uh, product. And uh, so you can see that the ACM product provides various capabilities. It provides cluster lifecycle, which allows you to provision clusters as well as discover clusters and bring it uh, into ACM for management. It has uh, end to end visibility, which is observability layer that allows you to monitor the performance characteristics, compliance characteristics, et cetera. It has an application lifecycle that allows you to define applications and then deploy them across a set of clusters and also uh, easily move, move pieces of the app as needed. And it has this governance risk and compliance piece, which is the one I'm going to focus on. So in the governance uh, compliance piece, when you go to this panel, what you see here is at, a very, at the top, you see a summary view. The summary view is based on the various standards. So when you define a policy to ACM, you can say which standards it applies to, and the policy can be applied to multiple standards, both internal and external. So that's what you're seeing here. And then we have a set of policies defined here. And you can see that we have policies for a wide variety of controls. So we have policies to, for HCD encryption, policies to deploy various enforcement points like Gatekeeper, the compliance operator, as well as Qverno. And we also have policies that Gatekeeper can enforce as well as q can, can enforce as well. Um, in addition, we have uh, policies for checking on certificate expiration, for example, um, et cetera. Now, the OpenShift compliance operator, which is a single cluster uh, feature that comes as part of OpenShift, uh, allows you to specify various security profiles and you can, it will then do checks on the managed cluster for those profiles. So here is an example. So CIS is one security profile it supports. And um, you can see that we have used ACM to configure that compliance operator to this security profile. And then it can return results, which you can view centrally from ACM. And you can see that it returns back all, for all the rules it checks, the things that are not compliant, it can return back those results. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight here is, um, when you look at the various policies, they can be uh, deployed either in enforce mode or in form mode. Uh, enforce mode is basically the policy will drive the configuration to the desired state that you specified in the policy. Whereas in inform mode, it is more an audit kind of mode where it, if the policy is not compliant, it's just going to flag a violation. So here, uh, as an example, the certificate policy, we have set it in inform mode. So in that case, when the violation occurs, one of the things you can also do is you can configure automation. So in this case, this automation is specifying an Ansible playbook, and this Ansible playbook is generating a Slack notification. Um, so by doing this, we are able to uh, trigger notifications. This is the, in the architecture chart I showed you on the right-hand side where we can integrate with enterprise processes. So for policy violations, now you can generate uh, you can open tickets. For example, we also have integration with ServiceNow, or you can generate a Slack message. This, this then allows you to action those things uh, per the enterprise processes. So this is what I refer to as automated governance. So not only can you trigger automation to get to the desired configuration state for the controls by deploying policies in uh, enforce mode, you can also do the same thing uh, using automation that you've defined with a policy in inform mode, and that allows you to also ensure that you are complying to the enterprise uh, IT processes. Um, let me just quickly highlight one more thing and before I turn it back to Aradhana. So one of the things you see here is the advanced managed cluster security, as well as the advanced, um, uh, advanced cluster security operator. These are the components of the advanced cluster security, um, which is the StackRox acquisition. So you can see that we can actually use ACM to uh, actually deploy um, 
the StackRock Central component as well as the StackRock's um, individual agents on the StackRock clusters. And you can see that the cluster names here are exactly the same names that ACM uh, knows about because ACM is basically uh, determining the inventory and then it is ensuring that StackRock is, is in place on those uh, clusters. And um, so the, as I mentioned earlier, the OpenShift bundle, Open, OpenShift Plus bundle includes ACM, ACS, it also includes Quay. And you can see here, we also have integration with Quay from ACM where we can use this policy, the image manifest vulnerability policy to detect vulnerabilities from Quay. So, so that's kind of a little demo. And then let me conclude by showing you our GitHub. So this is the policy collection repo where we have policies both in the stable and community folders. And we also have a lot of blogs that you can go and read about. Back to you, Aradhana. Can you hear me? And Aradna seems to have dropped. So if you could go back to the slides, Jaya. And, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. She's, we've had some little technical snafus. And, okay. Um, and you may have to talk through the slides for her. I'm not sure whether she ran out of time because I know she's a very, very busy person. <clears throat> okay, no problem. I need a little drink. Um, so yeah, I can definitely talk to this. So the rest of the presentation, we were planning to focus on the work that we are doing in the Kubernetes policy work group that both Aradhana and I are part of as well as a few others. So this in this work group, we are focused um, on two efforts in recent times. One is this policy report custom resource definition. So this is a standard that we have defined for returning policy violations. And this is supported by multiple enforcement points such as um, the file cooperator, the um, uh, QNO the policy engine, etc. So this allows um, from a management point of view, a standard way to be able to collate the results and then integrate with enterprise tools. The second work piece of work that we are focused on is the Kubernetes policy management white paper. And um, so we, we had published it out there for review, received a bunch of comments, if I've incorporated all those comments, and now we are ready to commit the paper. So you can actually see it here. Um, this is the policy management white paper. Um, so that is another uh, really good effort from this work group. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out is that we have a policy management panel coming up tomorrow. Um, in um, in this conference, in the KubeCon conference, that Aradhana and I will be part of, as well as Jim and Robert as well. Uh, please join us there uh, so we can continue the discussion in terms of uh, the what, why, and how of policy management for Kubernetes. Uh, Dan, I don't know how much time I have at this point. So at this point, um, we have hit the end of your half an hour um, considering all of our wonderful snafus okay. um, <laughs> and technical things. So we're going to uh, ask our next speaker to join us, um, it was John Fortin. And so um, thank you, Jaya, and please um, thank Adrana for, uh, for taking the time today as well. Um, okay. If you can right. stay around and um, hop in for a few minutes, um, Jaya, um, there may be some questions there and just um, maybe add the links and hop in to um, your events that are happening for the rest of the week of KubeCon. So if people want to join there um, and come to those, that would be great. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you very much right. for, for the opportunity here. Thank you.